Welcome back guys. Uh, today we're going to do the next in my series of Windows alternatives <clears throat> and we're going to be installing Peppermint 7 today. Now Peppermint 7 is an Ubuntu based distribution. <clears throat> it's always uh, near the top of my list as far as uh, Ubuntu based distributions. Uh, Peppermint 7 is very similar to Linux Lite. They do a great spin on Linux. Uh, Peppermint 7 used to use the LXDE desktop environment. Now they kind of use a hybrid LXDE in combination with XFCE. They do use the Whisker menu as you'll see when we go through the install. <clears throat> you can get Peppermint 7 by going to peppermintos.com and click on the download link for whatever um, whatever version you need whether it be 32-bit or 64-bit. They do have a vibrant and active community if you go to the peppermint forum.peppermintos.com you'll find that they have pretty much all the bases covered. Um, tutorials, you can ask questions, uh, ve it's very very active uh, if you post a question more than likely you'll get a, an answer very quickly. Uh, it's just an overall excellent distribution. Now if you go to the back to the website they do have a user guide as you can see it's broken down into lots of different uh, categories. Uh, read through that if you decide to try Peppermint 7. I do recommend that you do give it a try. It is an absolutely fantastic distribution. One of the best in my opinion. So let's get to the install. Now I do have uh, Peppermint 7 running in VirtualBox. This is the screen that you'll see uh, when, as soon as you boot up from the USB. I have given you instructions on creating that USB in prior videos. So once you boot uh, into your Peppermint 7 ISO USB, uh, this is what you'll see. Now you can try Peppermint 7, install Peppermint 7. Uh, I recommend that you, you, you click on try. You can install Peppermint from within the uh, Peppermint OS. So let's click on try Peppermint OS live. And there we are. So I'm going to right click on the icon and select open. So we're going to go through the installation process. Now this is a typical Ubuntu install as you'll see. So we're going to select our language. Uh, download updates while installing. I will. And because I have NVIDIA graphics and Broadcom Wi-Fi, I'll select third party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware. and what you do there is entirely up to you and your system. So now it's taking a look at my uh, disks, maybe other uh, uh, Linux distributions or Windows. If I had Windows installed, this is a VirtualBox disk, so it's not going to show anything else. So my selection would be Erase Disk and Install Peppermint. But if you have Windows installed, it'll give you the option of installing Peppermint alongside um, Windows. Now, if you need to do some petitioning, I have I released a video showing you how to use Gparted Live. Um, and of course, as you're doing the install, if you click on the menu, if Gparted is available, and we can just type that in. Uh, if Gparted is available, then you could use Gparted from within the uh, install, uh, distribution install, to let you go ahead and partition your disk. So we'll close that out and we'll continue with the install. Now I'm installing to a virtual drive it's going to create one petition for my home root and another for swap. We'll click continue. It's 
it's going to pull, pull, pull in my location which is correct uh, English keyboard that's correct continue and now it's going to ask for your name I'll select the password and you can change anything in these boxes you can put anything you want in there and I'm gonna select login automatically you do sacrifice some security by doing that if you have multiple users I would leave require my password to log in if you're the only user on the system as I am you can go ahead and click login automatically so now Peppermint is being installed to my hard drive. Uh, it's not a very long process, but I will go ahead and uh, pause the video, and I'll be back once that finishes. Okay, and the installation has finished. I'm going to click Restart Now. And it should boot up to the uh, screen that you would see once you finished your install and rebooted. So let me take a look at the resolution. Now let's go to monitor. 800 by 600. We will change to let's see. Well, let's do 1440 by 900. We'll apply. We'll select OK and now we will take a look at some of the features of Peppermint OS 7. Now if you click on the menu you can see it's the XFCE whisker menu. Categories are on the right. I normally want them on the left so I will go ahead and move them. Behavior uh, that should do it. Okay, so a couple of things I wanted to show you. One is you've got your settings, Peppermint settings panel. So you've got customized look and feel, panel preferences, and then then you also have the Peppermint control center. So these are two uh, configuration utilities that Peppermint 7 has developed that will help you get the most out of your system. So you'll want to spend a little bit of time here, uh, take a look at all of the options, and you can tweak your system to make it look the way you want it to look. So lots of variability, lots of tweakability. And let's see, for wallpaper, comes with a lot of different wallpapers. You can select the one that you like. Uh, they're all very nice, but of course, you might want to download something that you like a little bit better and put that up on your desktop. Peppermint 7 has put a lot of time, the developers have put a lot of time into uh, providing utilities that can help you get acclimated within Linux and get comfortable and make it your own. Lots of uh, software available. VLC is loaded out of the box. You've got the Ubuntu Software Manager. So if you want to install other packages then you've got all of the packages broken down by category. Very nicely done. It's a wonderful system if you're coming from Windows. You should be able to feel comfortable within a reasonable amount of time. Should not take you long at all. You've got System Tools, Synaptic Package Manager. So if you want to dig in a little bit deeper, the utilities are there for you to do that. For graphics, you've got Image Viewers, Document Viewers, lots of software available very nice distribution extremely well done I've always thought very highly of Peppermint uh, going back to I think the first one that I used was Peppermint 4 or 5 uh, but Peppermint 7 is a little bit of a departure from 6 
uh, Peppermint 6 still used the LXDE uh, desktop environment. Peppermint 7, as I said, is a hybrid, and that's why you have the whisker menu. So guys, that is it for this video, uh, installing Peppermint 7 step by step. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for stopping by the channel, and I'll see you soon. Take care.